Hey everyone, thank you for joining me. I'm a guy called Joe. This is Bootstrapping Tools, where we help everyday folks leverage third-party tools and applications to supercharge their workflows. Now, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about a few SQL querying techniques that's going to help you level up your SQLing ability. Now, if you're new to SQL, make sure to check out this video that we made for SQL beginners that's gonna go over all the basics. But enough talk, let's go ahead and just dive right into it. If you're exploring a data set for the very first time, one of the options that you can use is to do a select star from that table. So you can see everything that's available and see what data you can work with within each row. Now our table only has about half a million rows and it took us about three and a half seconds. You can imagine if you're working with millions of rows, that's gonna take upwards of 10 seconds, sometimes 20, which could be a lot of waiting time for your query to actually output something for you to take a look at. So instead of doing a select star from the entire table, what you can do is you can add in a limit function in there, and then that'll allow you to run the queries much faster. You can see here, it took less than uh, a second here, less than half a second, and you're already able to see some of the data that's available. And then from there, you can start to explore and see what you might want to break out in order to start your data analysis. If you're looking to see how many records are located within your table, there's a really easy way to do that. So when you're doing the select star, just wrap that star in a count statement. And then, so you have select count star from that table. That's gonna give you the overall count of it. That way you know exactly how much data you're working with or how many entries you have in that table already. This is also incredibly helpful when you're trying to isolate the number of records per specific type. So let's say over here for our count, we want to see how many records we have inspection records for each borough. So what we can do is we can do borough comma count star. And then down here, you're gonna use a group by clause and you're just gonna say group by borough. When we do that, it's gonna break it all out so that you have for each individual uh, category, how many records are located in each one. This is a nice way to start separating and segmenting out your data so you can get a better understanding of how your data is allocated. Another cool thing that you can do with the group like clause is by instead of saying burrow and score here, you can actually just say one or two. And that's going to stand for the first column and the second column within your select statement. When you do it like this, it makes it really easy for you to switch out the columns, uh, save, helping to save you time when you're doing your analysis. Another thing that you can also do is when you're adding in the order by clause, you can do the same thing. So if we want to order it by the borough, we'd say one, you can say ascending. And then for the grades, maybe you want to do descending. So you do two and then D E S C for de descending. And run that, it's gonna order it nice and neat for you. So as you change the column, uh, columns that you're selected, it's gonna automatically reference that within the one and two references down below. So when you're searching through data and you're trying to isolate specific ones using your where clause, you might notice that there might not always be a clear way to get something that equates to it. So for Wendy's, we know that there's plenty more Wendy's than just two. So what you can do is you can, instead of saying equals, say like, and then within your option, your, your search query, just put a percent sign. So you can do Wendy and the percent, and what that's gonna do is it's going to return everything that matches when Wendy in the beginning and then anything after it will also be returned you can see here we have a lot more records and that's because some of these records have other things within it so like number 108 and in some cases without the apostrophe now when you're working with nasty data sets like with an apostrophe there's a way that you can actually query for it and that's by using an escape key so when we update this we put an e in front of our search term here and then we do a backslash apostrophe s and then put that in there it's going to put in everything that has that apostrophe. That way you're able to query for data sets where the value has a special character within it. You can just go ahead and escape it by adding E to the front of your search term. Now, when you're working with data sets that you want to aggregate by a date and value, and you're getting a specific date uh, from the calendar, what you might wanna do is you might wanna group it up by a particular month. To do that, what you can do here is you can wrap your date column using a two char uh, statement and then make sure that you're turning that date into a date just to ensure that it is a date type. And then within here, you can put in a format type. So for us, it's going to be MON for the month written out and then four Ys to indicate the 
year, uh, the full year. And then once you run this, it's going to aggregate everything up so that you get the total amount per month, per location, or whatever you're selecting in your select statement. If you're ready to level up your data analysis, make sure to check out this video that we made on Google Data Studio. It's a business intelligence tool that helps you create beautiful dashboards and reports to help visualize your data sets. But I'm a guy called Joe. This is Bootstrapping Tools. It's been a pleasure and we're out.